Welcome to module number five of the Google Sites Basic Tutorial. In this module, we're going to look at how to use PayPal shopping cart gadgets, um, a really simple one that's easy to use inside your Google site. So um, we'll cover the first step, which is preparing the image that you want to use in conjunction with the shopping cart and how to load that image onto your Google site uh, storage and then how to get and insert the actual PayPal gadget itself. Then what you need to do to fill in the details uh, for the PayPal gadget so that when people then want to shop on your site they can do it easily. How to insert the image that you've already uploaded into a gadget. Um, and how to format the gadget so that it looks good on your Google site. Okay, so before we learn about how to set up a simple PayPal shopping cart in Google Sites, let's just have a look at how the shopping cart actually works. So this is an example where a shopping cart is being used for as a fundraising tool. Um, so with this, this is the image that relates to the item that the person is quote-unquote buying. This is the description, the category, the price, and then the Add to Cart button. So if we were to click on the Add to Cart button, what would happen? It would take you over to the PayPal account that's registered with that shopping cart. So for this shopping cart, it's registered with Give a Gift That Grows. Um, and the product, the item, was Sponsor a School Cleanup Event. The price was $50. Um, I added to cart, so it's $1. So the total is value is fifty dollars. Now if I change the quantity to ten and then update, then the total value will change to five hundred dollars, as you can see here. So then if someone was to click on check out, um, it would go straight to the PayPal checkout system, which gives people this shows the summary of what they're gonna order. And they can either pay with their PayPal account or they can pay using a credit card. So that's the basic principle about how the PayPal shopping cart system works. Now, um, the next question is, well, how do you set this up on your Google site? So the first thing that you need to do is to prepare the image that you're going to use in your PayPal shopping cart gadget. So for that, we're going to go over to Photoshop, um, and we'll just open a random photo at this point. We'll just use this one. So this would be the image of the product that you're going to put in your shopping cart. Now the uh, pixel height for the PayPal shopping cart image is maximum 120 pixels. So I'm going to just do it like that. And then as you would do with any photo, um, you then do a save for web. So that's what the image will look like, the actual size. And we do save. And we'll just call this shop1 for now, for this exercise. So we'll put that on the desktop. And as always, don't save when you've uh, made a change to an image. So go back to the website, and maybe we'll make a new page to do this in. So create page, and we'll call this test shop, create page. Okay, so here's the page we're going to put the test shopping cart into. So it's really quite easy to do you insert and then you go down here to more gadgets so gadgets are basically all these different little things that you can put onto your website there's all sorts of gadgets that you can look at most of them are a bit kind of like fun fun but there's a lot of different options you can look at and there might be things that are suitable for your website so have you know feel free to browse these you can search them online as well you just may need to make sure that they Gadget is a gadget that's compatible with a Google site. So the PayPal uh, shopping gadget is available under this section at the moment called Featured. So you just click on there. 
and you'll see this PayPal simple storefront so just go ahead and select that one and this is what will come up and that's what it looks like that's the basic uh, functionality of the gadget so you can click select to select that gadget and then it'll give you three options which is the option for the buttons so it can either say buy now add to cart or view cart so for this we're gonna just select add to cart so that that's the one you would use if you have multiple items that people might want to shop from okay the next step is filling in the email address so what's this you can always go over the what's this to get a little bit more information so this is the email address that's registered with your PayPal account so you need to have a PayPal account before you can set this up so um, I'll just use my personal PayPal account here so that's Petra Ada at gmail.com and the only two countries that you can select is the UK and the United States for that registry and you can choose a few different currencies we're going to use US dollar for this and the item name is going to be a test shop item so this should be whatever the actual name of the product that you're putting in this particular gadget. You can put a description if you want to, that's optional, you don't have to do that. Um, we'll just write something, this is how the description would look. So just so you can have a look at what it's going to look like. Uh, keep in mind you can only do 250 character characters for that. Now item options, um, this can give you a drop down menu, so for example if you're doing like small, medium, large size, um, that'll give options to the buyer, and option title, uh, so that would be the title of whatever those options are, so say if it was small, medium, large, um, then the title would be size. and then image item so we're, we haven't loaded our image item yet into Google so we're gonna do that in a minute and you need to have that already loaded onto your Google site before you set up before you finalize the cart and then you type in whatever the price is so we're gonna say this is ten dollars if there's a shipping cost you type it in there and if there's a tax rate then you type it in there and then last but not least um, you can adjust the settings for the display of the shopping cart so how big the actual shopping cart looks on your website so we're just gonna go with the standard for now and we don't want to use a border and we don't want to use a title so we're just gonna click OK and when it first appears it's just gonna look like this yeah um, that's what gadgets look like when you're still in editing mode in Google Sites so as soon as you click Save the way it looks is going to change. So there it is. There's your cart item. So um, we have this image that we've prepared over here, which we want to load onto um, the website so that we can use it as the image for this shopping cart. So to do that, we're going to um, uh, click on the edit page again and insert image choose file and that's the image that we've already resized to 120 pixels so we'll open that and click OK now we want to know what the URL for this image is so that's the URL for the image so we need to copy that URL and go back here and now we can click on our gadget um, and click on the word properties and that'll go back to the same menu that we had before so we just need to go down to the where it says image item this is where you enter the URL of the item image so that's where we want to paste that and click OK and we're going to get rid of this because we don't need that for we just needed that 
moment uh, for a moment because we need to copy the URL. So let's have a look at how it looks now that we've added the image to it. So there's the um, image with the title and the description. Now as you can see we've lost the button. So why? how come we lost the button? The reason is that the properties, the size of the shopping cart gadget isn't big enough. So that is quite a common thing to happen, So, but it's easy to fix. You just go to edit page and again click on the properties and then you scroll down to where it says the display and we have to make the height bigger so we'll try and make that maybe 450 pixels and see if that does the trick. So it looks like it might almost be too big but um, let's have a look. So there we go, now that we made the height uh, taller then we can see that we can see the cart. So we're going to want to adjust that just a little bit more to make sure that it really fits the space properly. So I think we're looking more at something along the lines of like 250 or 300. Let's do 300. So this sort of thing, you just play with it until you get it right for your particular um, needs. And um, once you get a standard template set up, if your um, next items are of the same sort of standard, it'll be fine. You can just use that over and over again. So if you can see here, it's slightly cut off here down at the very bottom, so we'll make it just slightly bigger. And then it should be perfect. Let's just make that just right. So we'll make this 260. OK. And hopefully this will do it. There we go. So there's a great um, little shopping cart gadget. And the, as soon as it's online like that, it's already functional. So now, um, if I was to click on that shopping cart, um, like we did previously when we were having a look at how the shopping cart works, um, you'll see that there's the item with the price, and now it's linked to this email address because that was the email address that we used for that shopping cart. So it's very important to use the right email address when you're setting up the shopping cart gadget. Um, so once you've made the gadget, if you're going to have a sort of series of different items that are basically the same size, what you can do is just um, copy the gadget that you've made and then paste another one. And if these are all underneath each other because they don't have the wrap on, so you put wrap on save. So now you have a shopping cart with a series of different uh, or you have a page with a series of different shopping cart gadgets and you can quite easily go in and edit each of those individual gadgets. So that one's already okay and then the next one you click on it and it's linked to the same email but it's a different item and I'm going to call this for item 2 and you're going to want to link that to a new image we don't need to do that now because you know how to do it already but you'd want that to be a new image and maybe it's a new price but the rest of it you can leave the same because the template should work for what you need so you just click OK and save and you'll see that you now have, you know, a variety in here. Now, you can see that this, um, you lost the bottom of the button. The reason for that is the description was longer than the previous one. So this description fit on only two lines, whereas this one goes down to three. So you'd have to give yourself either extra space in the size of that cart, or you'd have to somehow shorten your description so that you're sure that it fits 